denoted by x, y, z. If the joint probability mass function can be written as the probability of x times the probability of y given x times the probability of z given x and y, that can always be written, but z just depends on y. So this is re a restricted form. It says the dependence of z on x and y just depends on y. And examples of this would be x, say is binary, you corrupt, you change it with probability p, that becomes y, and then you further corrupt it, that becomes That's a Markov chain. A Markov process is one in which it doesn't matter how you got here. The conditional distribution of where you're going depends only on the state of where you are. Here's another example. Is there a question? No. Another example. X gets corrupted into Y. Ran. There's some joint distribution. And z is equal to g of y. So this is a deterministic function of y, which is a special case of a random function. And here's an example that generates the notion of sufficient statistics. Suppose that I have theta coin parameter probability coin probability of heads is theta and that generates a sequence of outcomes. independent coin tosses. That is, this is what we call a Bernoulli theta. Process. The xi's are 1 and 0 with probability theta and 1 minus theta, and they're independent. Now, often what you do with these coin toss outcomes is just to calculate x sub n bar. This is 1 over n summation of xi. So that is a Markov process. Now, there are some other characterizations of Markovity that are equivalent. Fact one. X, Y, Z, Markov, implies X and Z are conditionally independent. 
given y. That's nice. It says the past and the future are conditionally independent given the present. That follows immediately from this definition. Proof. P of x, y, z for the Markov is, as I've written there, P of x, P of y given x, P of z given y. And I want to show P of x, y, z equals P of y times P of x given y times P of z given y. Right, that's what I mean by conditional independence. Given y, the conditional distribution of x and z given y is the product distribution given y. All right. So let's do that. Here's our definition of Markovity. Let's rewrite this as P of x comma y, the joint distribution, and then rewrite this as P of x given y times P of y. In other words, I've just written this product as this product by reversing the order in which I do the conditioning. But this times this is exactly that form. All right, here's another fact. If a Markov chain x, y, z is Markov, then so is z, y, x. Act two, I guess. If x, y, z, then z, y, x. Sometimes right, so we can just write, can write, when we have a Markov process, x, y, z, without arrows or with double arrows. Okay. Let's prove that. Proof. P of x, y, z the basic definition is P of X times P of Y given X times P of Z given Y. This becomes P of X, Y. And this becomes P of Z, Y over P of Y. And that becomes P of 
z times p of y given z. So again, I'm just what what horrors have I done here? That equals that. Uh, Oh, divided by P of Y. Is that the comment that I heard? Yes? Raise your hand. Yeah, good. That's it. Good. Okay. Now we put this up here. So this whole thing now is P of XY. P of Z. P of y given g over P of y. I brought that over here. But this then becomes P of x given y. So look at this. This is equal to P of z times P of Y given Z times P of X given Y. So we proved that. So Markovity is the same backwards and forwards. And also Markovity implies conditional independence given the thing in the middle. Now, here's the fun thing. What is the fundamental difference uh, definition of Markovity. Well, I'd like to say maybe it's the one I gave, but the best one is this one. And here's why. Markovity says that this and this are conditionally independent given y. The past and the future are conditionally independent given the present. Let's look at a two-dimensional process. Here's the ocean. And it's a random process taking on these values. And that is x at x in, that's some coordinate value. Now it's not indexed just by, well, there's no indexing there. Uh, we index things by their coordinates. And if we say this is uh, outside, and this is inside, and this is boundary. We'll say we have a two-dimensional Markov process if outside is conditionally independent of the inside given the boundary. So that generalizes, whereas a raster scan definition of Markovity just doesn't, well, I mean, you can work it into this form, but this is really what you're talking about. A Markov process uh, in um, two or higher dimensions just means that the inside and the outside are conditionally independent given the boundary. Now that reminds me somewhat of uh, Gauss's law. You know, it doesn't matter where you put the charges inside a region, the flux through the region is just depends on the total amount. 